guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dan and Needles for another breakdown of Shadow's House. This is season two, episode number three. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you have found me for the first time, I break down seasonal animes every single week on the channel. Shadow's House has been something I am very excited to do. You guys also seem to really like watching this one. It's got the highest views on any of the other breakdowns right now. Thank you guys so much for showing me some support. I will keep on powering through this one just because I also really love this anime. This anime is great. I love the vibe so much about it before we get going make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel we are aiming to hit 1k of subscribers can we do it before the end of the year let's jump back into it because last week i was drooling all over christopher so let's go back and see what hot crop christopher has to say now christopher is telling us a story all about the scorchers they can join together and create a phantom i think we've had this briefly mentioned in season one but he's now setting the theme because everything he essentially says comes true which is a little bit dubious apparently it has the ability to to kill a shadow i know it can affect a doll i don't know if it can fully kill a doll but what he seems to be inferring is that it does have the ability to kill a shadow because he's actually talking to the shadows at the time that could be something to maybe note because it seems very interesting that suit would also have the ability to hurt a soot being or a shadow we do get to see another glimpse of barbie pre change happier smiley before she became a star bearer but we can see how well loved christopher was very well loved in fact he was super popular everybody was following around everybody wanted to talk to him this week we do also get a nice little dive into soot powers who's got soot powers who's got control of them we've seen a couple of different types the ability to control a doll's face like louise has even though we are told that it could also break a living doll which is concerning but the ability to control somebody that in itself is a little bit unnerving but she does seem to think it's okay so maybe she doesn't actually know what happens if she uses those powers maybe she doesn't know because i don't think all the kids are aware of what eventually happens with the two becoming one also get to see the same kind of powers on emilico that seems to be one kind of power that seems to be a pretty common one too being able to control another being but there's also the one where we've got movement production kate seems to have this as well being able to move things around ollie is very similar he's able to power a machines the rejoice party thankfully gets interrupted however it's not a good interruption rosemary coming in soot sickness once again she said it a few times now terrifying because we actually get to see how a living doll gets soot sickness the scorchers literally enter the body they force their way in and we're told that they are denser i'd like to know what the difference between the scorchers are and soot coffee because soot coffee also has soot in it but obviously it's less dense but eventually it becomes addictive when does a scorch or a pile of soot become alive and take on a presence are scorchers alive are they their own being when does soot take on its own life force soot sickness seemingly looking quite a bit like zombification living doll affected is unable to control themselves they walk around not really conscious or aware of their surroundings and they become a little bit on the violent side just like in our story from christopher's story earlier we have a score turning into a phantom which is nice because it sets the scene and it does also keep that story in mind whether that's important or not whether he knew something Emilico makes a major mark on Ollie this week and I think this is very key as well because she is trying to become a star bearer. She's able to impress Ollie with her bravery. The use of his machine. We do see the other shadows saying that the machine is pointless. Ollie seeing a shadow who is wowed by the machine. Different from the other reception he's had. Her wowing him is going to be very key because we know that star bearers are sent across on a recommendation. They get a recommendation by another star bearer. So Ollie also being wowed by Emilico and Susanna as well is impressed with Kate that's at least two star bearers on our side I didn't really think they had the time to be standing around chatting let alone discuss the workings of the machine but they somehow do the phantom is polite enough to allow them to talk about mechanics and then get moving we do get to see some fantastic teamwork all of the living dolls beaming together being able to break it apart some living dolls are stronger than others so they're able to punch through things and Milico whizzing around them working out that they can handle the phantom better by breaking it into pieces but we are definitely making that mark on Ollie and perhaps even the rest of the team that everyone is seeing how brave how she is rushing headfirst towards the phantom do get a little glimpse of our figure this week they haven't made an appearance for an episode or two they do just seem to be standing there though they don't seem to be doing anything physical apart from when they produce a scorch which makes me wonder did the massive amount of scorches was that anything to do with the figure and if so what is the figure trying to do because they initially just stand there watching the chaos playing out seem fixed 
on looking at Emilico. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, whether she's impressed them or they're seeing Emilico destroying all their hard work as a bad thing, so maybe making an enemy of somebody. Emilico's leap of faith at the end is a fantastic moment as well as she ends up wowing the entire room just straight after Bobby has just slated her once again but Emilico this time being able to use her bravery save the day get that moment when Ollie is just shaking her really excited and you've got Nancy and Sean pulling them apart I definitely think he's impressed with her and I would wonder if a recommendation would come from Ollie as well Ollie is pretty cool I do like Ollie he's just obsessed with his machines and he loves inventing things you can see that so much that he's more interested in powering things up and not really taking into account the doll that is actually holding the hose. We also see Oliver is the one who is powering the machine. Massive huge twist to end on. Belle seemingly destroys the treasured coffee but we already know from this entire episode that living dolls can be controlled. Living dolls can be controlled by soot. Is it possible at that moment when they went to save the coffee, someone took over them and controlled their body and forced them to smash it into the ground? Up until this point, Belle hasn't struck me as somebody who would want to go against and rebel against the house. Whenever we've seen her bullying Emilico, it's because she wants to be a star bearer. I'm pretty sure she wants to impress them. We know that soot can be used to control dolls, so who is trying to control Belle? What purpose? Is it the figure? Is the figure trying to sabotage the house in some way? Did the figure also work out that the coffee is evil and wants to keep all of the living dolls, their minds clear? So a week without having to drink anything, they might actually become sober. Is it also possible that he wanted to release those scorches to become a phantom to maybe kill a shadow? Did he really want to harm all the living dolls? I don't quite know what the goal is yet because it could be anything. It does initially seem like it's sabotage against the living dolls, but breaking the coffee, stopping them actually drinking it, attack on the grandfather and the way that they keep control of the living dolls. It's very hard to know right now what side these actions benefit the most. What happened to Christopher? He was so popular, he seemed very cheerful. Is it possible he ended up rebelling against the house, working out that the coffee might have been evil? Is this Christopher coming back? Because we don't know what happened to Christopher yet. No one's actually said what the fate of Christopher was. Is the shadow figure the shadow? Or is it the living doll of Christopher? Or did he manage to combine? I would love to know who the figure is. I am hoping that this ends up being resolved. I think this entire season is mainly centering around the star bearers and this figure. So very excited to see where we go. Really good episode. Action packed as well. Really enjoyed seeing the action, the fast pacing on it. Can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really love breaking down Shadow's House. It's always a great pleasure of mine to talk about it to you guys. I hope you're having a great weekend. Take care of yourselves, guys. And I'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye, guys.